Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here today. Today's video is all about test case creation using Test Sigma and the natural language that you can use in order to create the, such test cases. For those of you who are new to Test Sigma, I highly recommend you to take a look at the following video where I was introducing already t Test Sigma's functionality and I give the complete picture on what you can do with Test Sigma from test case creation, test execution, dash, uh, test case reporting and so forth and so forth. So as I mentioned, if you haven't seen the video before, take a look at the video to get a first um, look at Test Sigma. And today's video is all about test case creation using natural language and how easy it is to create a test case and also to run the test case, of course. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's video and hands-on tutorial on how to do it. So as you can see, I'm on the Test Sigma dashboard. I already created a demo project called Daniel Demo, <laughs> really creative. And now I would like to create a new test case. And therefore, you need to open up the navigation structure. So just move the mouse over to the left. And there you can see the different actions that you can do. For you to know is that I already installed a Test Sigma Chrome extension that is really helpful and powerful for you to use as a recording tool and also to identify objects while using the test case, test case creation process. At the same time, I already have an agent installed for local execution, but also Test Sigma offers great capabilities for in-cloud execution and I will show you that in a second. So let's take a look at the test case creation. So you click on test development and you end up on this screen. It says, hey, no test cases created yet. Let's change it. So we click on create a test case, click that button, and then you can give a name. I don't know, I would like to test something on my blog, Adventures in QA. So let's enter something like search test. Not a good name, don't do the same thing, but I'll give it as an example, search test. So we enter up the URL, oh, that's wrong. Uh, it's this one. So we enter up this uh, URL. And as you can see, Test Sigma is already checking the URL if it's available for Test Sigma for test case creation. That's important. It might be the case that you have an, an URL that's behind a firewall or is not accessible on the public web then in this case, you need to do some advanced uh, settings in order to have a tunnel or a VPN connection to your system. So for me, everything is fine. And I hit the button, write test manually. So we click that button. And as you can see, we are now on that screen. And we are already in the middle of the test case creation. As you can see, Test Sigma already added a step. Navigate to adventuresinqa.com. So that's my URL. And already below, you can see on the next test case step that you can do, Test Sigma offers you ideas, suggestions, what you can do with the natural language in order to write your test cases. And that's quite impressive. So it says here, start typing the action, navigate to, I mean, we have that already. Um, what else is there? Let's wait one more suggestion is enter admin in the username field. So, and we would like to verify now the latest blog post that I published. And for that, we can write verify that the, and you already can see whenever I type, I get suggestions from Test Sigma. And you can see also the highlighted characters or words that I already entered in my test case are highlighted in the list below. So I would like to verify that uh, a given title is already seen on my blog. So. Verify that the current, let's type it, page displays text. We click that one. And then as you can see, it gives me some more options. What I would like to verify. Do I want to verify a plain text, a, param a parameter, some runtime variables, and so forth and so forth. And as you just said, uh, seen before, I was already doing some little preparation for that video. So I was copying already the title that I would like to verify here. So I just enter this the title here, hit the enter button. Oh, that's my mistake. Sorry for that. So we hit enter. And as you can see, this test step was added. And now we can add another step. 
So let's assume we now on the website, on my blog, we verified everything that has passed. And now I would like to enter something in the search because to be honest, my blog doesn't offer too many input fields and things, but I would like to show you how to do it. So we can just say, enter mobile testing. I would like to add mobile testing, mobile testing into or not in. Now I made a mistake. Let's let me show you something. I would like to show you the, the suggestion. Sorry, my bad. Enter test data. This one I would like to use enter test data in the element field because I would like to show you a really nice feature of the test case creation here. So as you can see again, now I get a suggestion what I would like to test. I say, okay, I would like to do plain text. So I will enter mobile testing. And then it says in the element field, but to be honest, I don't think that there is a field called element on my blog. So it's, and also maybe you can see it in the video, it's, it's marked and highlighted as a green text. So I'm, I'm clicking on that one. And now out of the box, there is a, there's a box or like, or like yeah, an area for you, an element picker that comes up. And as you can see, I am already prepared something for that video, of course. Um, I already um, created two elements basically for my blog. So the one is the input search and the search button. Yeah. So in case you haven't done anything before, you haven't done uh, created any elements before, you can click the create element um, button here. And also if you haven't done anything before, this is also what Test Sigma will suggest to you like to record an element. So you can either say, okay, I would like to record something or if you know already, you can give the, the, the element on your page a name and the screen name. You can say, okay, how do you would like to locate it by XPath, CSS, Elector, ID name and so forth and so forth. So, and if you don't know it, you can also say, okay, record element. For me, it says already, yes, I have run it already in the background. I can show you in a second. Um, I already have the, the test Sigma Chrome extension um, activated on my tab here. So that's why you see that, uh, that, that message. In case you haven't done so far, it will open up the following thing. And as you can see here, you go on that page and we see the record element functionality here. So you can also move it a bit slower down and then we go to that field. So for example, you hover your mouse on the input field and then you can see on top, oh, it's now, <laughs> it's now hard for me to, to show you. It says S and then input search or for in that case uh, as input search as a button. And if you click that field, you get everything you would like to have in the capture element functionality of Test Sigma. So now it says, okay, we have the input search. You can give it a name. It's, lo uh, it's located by the X path and so forth and so forth. And if you have to hit the capture button, you will all then end up in that screen. So everything is recorded here. And the cool thing is you can define all your elements on your web application uh, and save them within Test Sigma. And the next time you would like to create a, a test case using NLP, you can just, as I just did before, hit the, uh, click the, the element and then select everything from that list. So that's really, really super easy to do. So now in our case, we would like to enter mobile testing in the input search. So we're doing that and you can see here, it replaces automatically. So we click create and what else we'd like to do? Now we would like to click on it, right? We would like to click on the search. So we would like to execute it. And as you can see, as I was just clicking into the, the fourth step, I can already see things that I would like to do. Also some suggestions based from the, the segment. I would just click on an element. So I hit click element. And as you can see, it's the only parameter that I can add to that step. And in that case, I would like to click the search button. Add it here. And then it says yes. And then I can do the, the last step. So as you can see, it's really simple. And I would basically do the same thing. Verify that the current page displays text. As you can see here, we click that one. And then we say, okay, I would like to add plain text. And then I would like to search for mobile testing because this is part of the result of the headline of the executed search, basically. Then you hit the create button again, it will be saved and 
you are basically ready to go for execution and you have different options as I mentioned before. You can also um, run it from here, click the try runs button or you click the same thing here, it's a similar thing or basically it's, it shows you the same. So let's, let's click on the run button here and then you have basically two options. So the first one is to use the Test Sigma Lab and the, the Test Sigma Lab is the, the cloud service of, of Test Sigma and it says here we can say we would like to execute on a Mac or on a Windows, which operating system version and which browser we would like to execute. So we can we can basically check what we would like to have. In case, oh sorry, there's something going on in the background. Uh, in case you would like to um, don't execute on the Test Sigma Cloud, but you would like to execute on your local agent, you can click that button here and then you get an in, in like a nice information saying, hey, you need to install the Test Sigma agent to run the test on your local machine. And then if you hit install, you get a, a subset of, of installation instruction on how to install the agent. I have done it. It takes a while because it downloads some gigabytes of data, but everything runs really smooth. So for that example, I will stick to the Test Sigma lab. So and as I said, without any changes here, I click run now and then test Sigma uh, shows you the basically the run execution tab and as you can see it says okay it's booting a, a virtual device or like a yeah a device of the browser that we you just configured and, and while it's booting you can also see some more information like when the, the test is being executed again some credentials and okay we can already see it has passed see it has passed that's cool so that's a good thing so we did a good job here um, so you can directly see the steps which one of the, the, the steps were, were passing you get the complete overview uh, you see some um, some test execution details you get some metadata as well that might be helpful for you and for your team and you can also get some attachments well there's nothing yet um, you can also see the test steps the current test steps that you that you entered basically. Um, so the things that you have done. You can also watch the video. So Test Sigma is also preparing a video or it's like recording everything you've, you're doing on the cloud as well. Now it says, please, please be patient, we are preparing a video. This of course takes some time. Recording, saving and coding, preparing for you, but it will be there. And last but not least, you also have logs that you can that you can click here. There was unable to render large log files to do memory limitations. Maybe that's because I'm on the trial version here as well. So uh, as you can see here, everything looks good. Everything has passed. Um, but, but let's do a mistake now because I would like to show you how it looks like in, in case of an error. So let's go to that step here. We change the, the plain text data and we just uh, remove the, well, let's do like this. Yeah, so we just manipulate this the test data here, we say, okay, we run again. And it says again, we showing you up the test Sigma lab interface. Yes, we would like to run now. And again, it says booting uh, everything for your need, for your, for your convenience. I mean, of course, if you do this locally on your test agent, it's, uh, it's a bit faster, but it now spawns like a virtual machine with Windows 11. Uh, with a with a specific Chrome uh, version and also with the with the screen resolution and as we can see here it says failing and the error message is the current page does not display text mobile testin two yes it's not there because it's not something that we entered right and again you get screenshots I mean in this case of course we could get rid of the cookie banner before but that's how it is but you can also see like how many of the counts, uh, how many times it, it, it basically, um, or which, how many steps actually uh, are failing. So and with that, we can also go back. We can check the, the activity uh, on, on the test case. There is no activity because people can also comment on your test execution. So the whole team collaboration feature is also part of it. Yeah, so that's cool. And then, uh, in the overview, you can see, okay, it, there is the test case. We only have one created. And with that, you can, of course, create multiple test cases, as, as I just mentioned before. Either you do it manually using this really simple natural language, or you can also use the recorder. 
like from the very beginning but in the end you will also basically end up in the same interface but as, as you have seen it it's pretty simple to create test cases using NLP with test Sigma and if you would like uh, to use such a tool or you would like to explore features of test Sigma I highly recommend you also to follow up the, the links in the video description where you can get um, everything you would like to know about test Sigma and yeah that that was basically today's video um, how to do test case creation using NLP on test Sigma uh, if you like it, leave me a thumbs up, leave a comment. What do you think about Test Sigma and their capabilities? And as always, have a great day, have a great night, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, and see you next time.